Because we broke off the bleed screw on this one right here, we're replacing you know, I, this. Uh, I was just down here just a little while ago. And Well, let's see. Started off with uh, we're replacing the caliper because the bleed screw broke off, and it's just easier to replace it than it is to try to get what's left of that out of there. So uh, he comes down with another part for us today, and we needed a 5279A. And what did the part store give us? A 5297A. I thought I'd record this just because this is hilarious. What kind of a symbol is that? What kind of a symbol is that? <laughs> they did not get that right. So the lesson here on this one is always double check your parts before you leave the parts store. Thanks to the world of editing, I'm putting on a, uh, a new caliper. And of course, I start doing something and I lose a bolt. Oh, the bolt's right there. Okay, but uh, yeah, the uh, bleeder screw on the other one broke off and I made a couple of uh, heroic attempts to remove it and just made more of a mess so it became a, uh, it's easier to just replace it than to spend all day farting around with it. So we got the, uh, the new caliper with the bracket, we got the uh, original hardware, well the hardware that came with the last one anyways these down in place. And the owner of this vehicle is floating around here someplace. I gotta go get my 18. I got an 18 in here. Cool. But I still gotta get the 18 for the top because there's no room for the impact. Probably be better off just grabbing a socket, but digging into that trunk and getting in all those tools, even though the toolbox is outside the car now, it's just it's just a pain in the butt. But we'll get this in, in here. Let's tighten down. Two wrench method again. Can't even see what I'm doing. Gotta love it. We'll tip, we'll tip you back and stand you up on top of a lug nut here. And now you can see what I'm doing. I bet you that lug nut feels good. <laughs> All right. And again, never trust your impact for tightening a bolt. All right, now we can go ahead and put the brake pads in. I don't think we actually determined an inboard or an outboard, yes we did. Well, that would that would do it. And then this one goes over here. All right, caliper on time. Bottom bolt out of the way for the moment. You see how little grease they give you to start with? joke. I'll grab my solar glide. I'll be right back. Just so that we don't mix too much of this stuff. We'll wipe their tiny little bit off. Bottom one you can actually screw in ahead of time. And then put the 
caliper. Slide the bolt right in like that. And then you can bring your caliper up and onto your brake pads. But what we're going to do first, same thing I did on the other side, is we're going to use some anti seize. Figure out where I put it. Over there. The owner paid me a real quick visit. And as I was starting to say for a uh, end of that clip was that uh, I'm going to put some anti-seize on the pistons. You know, just the surface of the piston that touches the brake pad. And just to help cut down that noise. That's him going by. Not so much that it makes a huge mess. But just a little little coating on the surface. And then the same thing with the ears right here. Just give them a nice little light coating. It. In case you can't see it, you get the coating right there and right on the pistons right there. Put my tin man can away, clean the grease off of this other pin, get some fresh grease on the end of the pin. Bunch of it right into the, the boot for starters. And then slide your caliper up and onto your brake pads. This is the one that you can't get it by the leaf spring. So I think I got myself into a pickle by putting that bottom one in first. So I'll do it the other way around. That didn't work. Now I gotta get the dirt off of it. Regrease. Not gonna take any chances of shoving any dirt in there. Now let's try this again. Grease on my bottom pin again. Aha! Watch out for that. sees all over the place. That's just the way it happens. Now we just got to work all these bolts all the way in. I never 
felt to do that before. I don't care too, this is brand new, hasn't been used yet. On this pin it can be a lot of fun. You got to make sure you pay attention to that part. So if you don't get the boot up onto the pin, it will seize up on you. A little screwdriver, a little pick, a little something to help push it on, but. Whatever you use, just be gentle with it because you don't want to go punching any holes. Almost had it. Nope. I'm going to go a little bit more with the bolt, I guess. Leave a little wiggle room so when you get the boot up onto the bolt, there we go. Just push it in all the way, and I did it. And the bottom one, we can spin that one in with the impact. That one there, the boot popped right onto it. So we're good all the way. Around. Oops, are we? Yep. Sometimes there's so much grease in here you can't tell. But yeah, that's all the way. Same thing with this one, it's all the way on. Just clean up some of the mess. Now make sure those are nice and tight. Double wrench method if need be. Now, not that the leader screw needs to be loosened now, but bring our hose down. We've got a brand new brand new banjo bolt and washers. Brand new brand new washers and a brand new ban banjo bolt. One on this silly little purple plug out. Grab the hose. The old bleeder screw out. The old copper washer's not on here. Why is there no copper washer on there? Did I lose one up. Oh, there it is. Okay. So that just means it wasn't missing from before. Put the wash the bolt through, facing towards the, the caliper. Put your last washer on the bolt. So you're holding it in place. And go ahead and thread your bolt all the way in. It's a good idea to just wiggle this line around, help everything get seated down. This is an 11 millimeter, so I'm going to go grab my 11 millimeter wrench. I'll be right back. And go ahead and snug that bolt down. Remember, you're dealing with a hollow bolt that's going to break easily or strip easily, and you're putting enough pressure to squash a couple of copper washers. So it's kind of delicate. It's a good idea if you don't have a feel for this to make sure you use a torque wrench. You get, you get a feel for it. Sometimes it's deceiving because you'll feel the, the copper washer start to crush. And the minute you feel that, you start thinking, oh crap, am I stripping this reds? 
It, it, it really takes experience, it really does. Otherwise, let's get to the torque wrench. All the instructions that we don't need, but I gotta go get them. Okay, so now that we've got that taken care of, right? Everything's all hooked up, everything's bolted down, bleed screws cracked loose. Let's go ahead and release these vice grips. My little hose pliers. Hose come back to shape. Okay, so we didn't squeeze it too hard. And finger tight with the brake, uh, the, the bleeder. Just finger tight with it. Got the hose on it. Actually, sometimes it's easier to put the wrench on first, but I don't have a lot of room to work with here. This will work until I get it tightened down anyways. Loosen that up. Now I did this so that you guys can see what's going on here. We have a week. figure out why why we're leaking take that 11 back off We are leaking because the surface that these washers go up against is all rusted and pitted. So we're going to clean that up. Now try a second time. Get this hose where you guys can see it. Maybe. Helps to take those off. Fresh fluid. Now we gotta make sure the master cylinder is full.
Jesus. I hardly even, hardly even got any out of this Stream. Seeing as you're here, you want to do me a favor? Put some pressure on that pedal. Let me know when you're holding it down. Okay, go ahead and let it back up. Pump it twice. Okay, holding it down. Pump it again. Hold it down. Yeah. Okay, we're done. That took care of the end of the air. Now go ahead and pump that pedal good and hard. Make sure that holds. Okay. Now the brakes are done. Finally, completely done. Yay. Nice. The parking brake will need to be readjusted after it's worn in a bit, but it's not dragging. So it might take a while to. Right. Can't figure out how to get the door open? <laughs> That's why I use my pinky. Are you telling a pinky get underneath the little lever? Yeah. Pull out of the It's a little awkward. It's alright. I'm going to go on the other door, so. Get all your lug nuts started by hand. done. So if you like this one, remember, like, comment, subscribe. If you found this video helpful, make sure you click that little uh, notification button. And don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. <laughs>